What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel and the first color grade tutorial on Cine Dailies. Now if you haven't watched the music video or the BTS, you can just pause this video and take a look or not, just whatever you want to do. I am going to share with you my very simple color grade uh, for this music video. And when I say simple, I'm talking about like two nodes or maybe three. We might spice it up a little bit. And how I like to use Dehancer in my editing workflow in DaVinci Resolve. Everything I talk about in this video, I find important, but you can also just click around. There are gonna be timestamps or chapters for you to kind of go where you please. So enough said, let's jump right into this and do some color grading. All right, so starting with the gear, surprise, surprise. For the shoot, I use the Sigma 18 to 35 Cine Zoom Lens. This is a very clean and very clinical look um, that it produces. And some of you might be asking, why didn't I use a lens that had more character like anamorphic or like the R lenses or SLR magic. Well, I'll explain later. Trust me, it'll be worth it. And in front of the lens for my diffusion, I use a one half black satin. Black satin, 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 satin. Because I wanted to have more control of my contrast. If I use a black pro mist, that lifts everything. My blacks, it blooms everything. There's not much control to bring back contrast. I like contrast. And eventually in post, it might be muddy if I'm trying to bring all that back down from my experience with using Black Pro Mist. By the way, is anybody interested in like a full filter video? Like there's other filters out there. And I know we talk a lot about Black Pro Mist here on YouTube, but there's a ton more options. Uh, so let me know in the comments below. All right, the camera. I use my trusty Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. Obviously, that's the camera I have right now. I love the sensor. I love the color that this produces. Uh, and compared to Sony, Panasonic, and Canon, uh, I just prefer this more. I have the uh, 2021 MacBook Pro, uh, MacBook Pro M1 Pro, 32 gigs of RAM, two terabytes. And it pretty much gets through anything I throw at it. But until I got to color grading this video, that's where I started to see the bottlenecking and bogged down and spinning wheel of death. So here are my project settings that help me get through the color grading process. And in case you never used DaVinci Resolve, this is not the tutorial for you to learn from it. There's tons of things out there, but let's just kind of go through this basic stuff real quick. So if you want to go down to the bottom right corner, you'll see like a uh, gear or, or, or yeah, you'll see a gear icon, click on the gear icon and you're going to open up your uh, media preferences. And so if you go to the bottom, um, I knew going in that my color grading process might slow this computer down. So I put my proxy media at half resolution, proxy media format at ProRes 422 LT, optimized media resolution at half. And I actually should have changed these to proxy or uh, LT, but I left it alone for some reason. Anyway, there was this little bug in DaVinci 17 where um, you would just open up the project and you would start editing. And when you exported it, there was a slight color shift. And so um, what you had to do is actually go to the color page in the settings and then change your timeline color space to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Now, I think they've actually corrected this in DaVinci 18. Um, so, but that's what I did anyway, just a pre precaution and everything works fine after that. Okay. Now we're on the timeline, but there's still a few more things I need to activate to make this run a little bit smooth. So what's nice about DaVinci Resolve 18 is that now you can have proxies be generated. And so I just make sure that's on to preferred proxies. And then you go down to timeline proxy resolution. I went all the way down to quarter. Yeah, I know. And so from there, I make sure that, um, render cache is on. I kind of actually left it on user, I'm sorry, on smart, because as I pause, it would just kind of just run in the background and you can actually set how soon you want it to do. The default is at five seconds, but you can have it even less. Um, it might, again, if you're on a laptop, you might run into some issues with that because it might be, it might be staggered a little. Okay, so briefly, I just want to talk about what Dehancer is. Dehancer is basically a film emulation plugin, and it's probably one of the best plugins I ever used to create the film look, the characteristics that we like to see, which are, you know, halations, digital grain, the different color shifts, different color profiles, all those things um, that we associate with film. I didn't list a ton, but you know what I mean. And I wanted to use it on this project because I wanted to experiment with a couple of things. So now see, see, I'm coming back around with why I use the lens 
for this project. Five minutes later. Yes, I could have done something a little more characteristic, but the 18 to 35, I haven't shot a ton with it on various projects, just mainly corporate stuff. I want to see how I can dirty up this lens and post. So that all being said, let me just show you what my no treat looked like. And it is the most simplest thing you would ever see. <laughs> um, that's because I actually edited everything in the profile for the video first. And then I added like a softening filter afterwards. For me, if I'm for a personal project like this, I'm not trying to spend too much time in the color grading process. I already know what kind of look I'm going to go for either from pre-production or just like my personal taste that I kind of fall back on. And I can get that quickly using Dehancer and all the other tools in DaVinci Resolve as well. So again, two nodes. <laughs> I'm a professional, y'all. All right, so let's actually just go into effects. I'm going to search for Dehancer. And now they're on 5.3, Dehancer Pro. Drop that on there. I'm really going to put some whatever film profile. We, we can change all that afterwards. Let me just turn all this off. It's kind of nice you can audition on and off what the look is in real time. But we're actually going to go to choose camera because now this actually has a Blackmagic Pro 6K profile. So we're going to choose camera, choose the vendor, Blackmagic Design, and we're going to go to 6K. It's essentially the same sensor. Uh, format. Um, this one, I think generally I was around four, uh, 400 ISO and I was shooting in B-Raw so we can you know make sure that matches. And we're going to go to Gen 5 ISO. And then, whew, easy. That looks great in my opinion. I mean, it's a little red, but uh, yeah, you see here in the scopes, it's a little red. But we're actually going to dive more into this. And the reason, again, the reason why I only have two nodes is that I did all the look creation in here. And if I wanted to just break out and do another node for like um, color balance and white balance and whatnot, I would just do that. But for time and efficiency, I am going to do it this way for now. Now, I don't know everything in this panel because there's a lot of options to mess with and they do have tutorials on the site to kind of walk through. But let me just show you the things that I tweaked. All right, so here's the fun part. Now you can choose from a very hefty list of film profiles or film stocks, right? And so what I like to do too, if I don't know what I want to pick just yet, I, but I know what feeling I want, I just kind of cycle through each profile once I enable it, each profile to see what it's doing. And then I'll try to find a nice base, right? And anyway, I can circle through this for forever, but you know, but I landed on Fuji Color, Fuji Color 100. And you can kind of push and pull what that looks like. If you push it, it's going to add more contrast. If you pull it, it's going to flatten it out a little bit. Uh, I'm just keep it at zero like that. You can mess with the black point. So I'm going to enable this. And then again, same thing with contrast, but you're just a little bit more refined. Um, so your black point, your, just your shadows in, essentially. And then your white point, your highlights, right? So you can push that, lower that, however. Then if you want to, so say you like your base, right? And you can actually just tweak some more of what you really, what would you prefer? So let me just enable that, right? You can get more yellow, more magenta. You get where I'm going, right? So basically you have a lot of control and um, a lot of options when it comes to coloring. Now, when it comes to the film grain, again, this is probably my favorite part of this because there's still a ton of options and control that you can dial in to look that you want. So here, film grain, you can change the size of it, the amount, you can make this really rungy, very subtle. You can mimic 16 mil film, 35 mil film, eight mil film, just by the slider. Uh, film resolution, how fine do you want it to be um, and detailed, or is it want to be kind of mushy and yeah, so you get that. I like the controls of having a shadow, midtones, and highlights because um, then now you have much more, less of a global control. You have more of a detailed control. Again, control is our life. And then of course, of course, chroma. Uh, halation is another thing. So then you can just start making some of this stuff bloom and have some softness to it. I did play around with this as well. And I'm actually just, I'll go to the actual, <laughs> the actual file so we can actually look at that. Um, and halation was nice too because the 18 to 35 Sigma, since it is a very clean uh, lens, there's not a lot of chromatic aberration, which is great. I like that versatility. But now I can add in 
chromatic aberration back into the image if I wanted to feel like it's, it's another type of lens, a, a dirtier lens. Okay, I want to make a clear distinction between how I was explaining halation versus chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is a lens characteristic. Um, you'll normally find it in anamorphic lenses or older lenses, and it's just where the, how the light bends and how the lens translates. The light, it's not a pure definition of probably put it in the description, but it's not a characteristic of film. Halation is a characteristic of film. Um, normally, if you had like a 35 mil film and you and you remove the rim jet layer, um, that will introduce the red halation that we kind of um, associate with Cine Steel. Cine Steel has removed the rim jet layer to have that characteristic in their film. So just want to make the distinction between the two. Chromatic aberration is a lens characteristic and halation is a film characteristic. I didn't want to sound like an idiot, so I need to make that correction. All right, back to the video. So, for example, if I go to this clip here and zoom in, see this red haze here? That's not the lens. That's actually the enhancer. And this is pretty cool. So if I come up here and I just turn off the softening here, it feels pretty like it's like coming from the lens, which is very, uh, very cool to see. You can actually put in a mask mode and really refine where it's going to be. But... um yeah, I think that's pretty cool. You kind of dirty up, again, dirtying up that lens again um, from a digital standpoint. And then the bloom here, look at that. So I kind of just enhanced the, the effect of how much bloom I want. If I used a black pro mist, um, it would have been already in there, kind of baked into the image, and I wouldn't have the flexibility and control that I wanted to have on the back end. So always think about the tools that you're using. You don't always have to use what everybody else is using. Use what's best for you um, to get the results that you want on the back end, especially if you're doing your own project. All right, let's kind of stick here again just for this shot. And I think there are some. So see here, I added more contrast with the Fujifilm profile. I make sure just to push it, and man, what a difference, right? <laughs> so much purple and everything in there. Um, I definitely kind of tweaked the white balance as well. All right, I'm gonna skip to another shot. I This is probably one of my favorite shots here, um, using the spotlight. Uh, again, you can watch the BTS to see how we got this shot. And all the detail and texture in this one too, obviously was all added. So let me just go through real quick and just turn off and on what was going on. So that's the black point. I did adjust that. That's the pull. I did that as well. I turned off halation here. Now, of course, you might say, hey, Joshua, that's not consistent with the look and stuff. That's okay. I think it wasn't, in this case, it wasn't pleasing to me to see. So I have, again, that option to kind of turn it off. I could have dialed it back some more, but it just really kind of creeped in in a weird way without any control. So that's why I kind of, I left it off. And then this glow, now this was, I like the bloom happening here. See, again, see how crisp this is? But as soon as you pop that on, you think, okay, there's some more filtration on there, but no. But no, I'm doing in post, which is pretty dang cool. Now, one of the downsides of using a very crisp lens with a lot of tight shots and less in camera diffusion, you show every detail of pores and face textures and stuff like that. And in this case, for a high fashion music video, it would have been preferred to have something a little more softer, especially on her skin to treat it a little bit more like a beauty, beauty shoot, right? And that's kind of the downside with choosing this lens because it is so sharp and so detailed. Um, I couldn't hide most of the stuff that I wanted to hide, that we both wanted to hide, but it is what it is. So the last note is actually a skin softening plugin, and I think that's really what did my computer in, which bogged down a lot. So I had to make sure it was rendered every time I added it or adjusted it. So those who are watching who are way more skilled than me, you're probably cringing right now. It's like, what is this dude even doing? Why is he even putting this out here? Again, as independent filmmakers who work on small budgets and big budgets, if you're editing your own stuff and you have a particular looking vision, you kind of just do it yourself. We all been there. We all do this. And so this is what works for me. I like the results that I came out with. I could have spent more time in it, but it, everything's a time crunch in this YouTube world, as we know. Um, another thing that I did learn, too, is just keep practicing planning ahead from start to finish, especially if you are editing. I'm glad I sat, sat down, took the time to do the pre-production, what filtration I want to use, and even if I don't know what other filters did to my image, I make sure to do that research. And I'll put a link in the description below where Tiffin does a whole video going through each and every uh, filter they have created for you to look at and see what the difference is. So I make sure I did that so I know 
what to choose. I wanted more contrast because I wanted to control the contrast in the back end. And that's why I chose black satin because it holds contrast a little bit better than black pro mist. So uh, anyway, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something from my process. Um, there's going to be more videos like this coming in the future, more projects, more short films, all that jazz. So make sure to uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions or anything I kind of missed or just glanced over pretty quickly, let me know. We can talk about it in the comments below. So until then, I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.